Okay, this is great. So uh, today we are uh, very uh, pleased to uh, to have Jack, uh, actually uh, Yunhan Jia, to be our speaker today. So he's a senior research scientist in Baidu X Lab. If you want to find an internship in Baidu, definitely try to talk to him <laughs> yeah. uh, after his talk. Uh, so he specialized in machine learning uh, security, especially those attacks and new attacks and new defenses, and also. Uh, we actually came from the same university, University of Michigan, actually even the same group. Uh, so uh, we share lots of um, this uh, security passion together. So as you can see, he'll be demonstrating lots of those uh, attacks on real world systems, like in uh, self-driving cars or in uh, the real world machine learning models. So uh, let's just welcome our speaker to uh, and I'm from Baidu Lab. And today's topic will be a uh, real-world threat to deep learning system, uh, practical attacks and security measures. Yeah, because I already made this slide in Keynote, hope every demo works fine in <laughs> PP PowerPoint. Uh, so first, uh, I will briefly introduce myself. So I'm a senior security research scientist and uh, got a PhD from the University of Michigan. And I'm currently focusing on AI security and also some notes about our group, we are a security uh, research and development group, and we put a lot of effort in uh, building secure uh, computing, uh, cloud computing platforms for future AI technologies. And our research focus, uh, we focus on all aspects of uh, system security and also as well as uh, AI security. And one of our uh, big project is called uh, MSRT or Memory Safe Trusted Execution Environment. Uh, we also uh, released a lot of open source tools uh, using memory safe technologies. For example, MesaLock is a memory safe Linux distribution, and MesaLink, a memory safe drop in replacement for OpenSSL, and uh, many others. And you are welcome to find us on GitHub. Uh, so, first of all, some background uh, on the machine learning set. So, we will be introducing uh, or mainly focusing on the deep neural networks today. Uh, which you can basically think of as a function that uh, with trainable parameters that learns a mapping. Uh, this can be either given an image, classify it as a cat or dog, or give a file and uh, classify it as denial or malicious. So the next will next will be why we care about it. So the, the ImageNet context is about the uh, most well-known context in the machine learning society, and it starts from 2009. Uh, the objective is given an image, and you want to classify this image into 1,000 different classes. In 2011, the best results is about 70% accuracy or 25% error, and at that time, no one used deep neural networks. And just two years later, in 2013, every top submission used deep neural networks, and the error rate was quickly brought down to only about 10%. So the power of it can be seen by the fact that from no one used it in 2013, uh, 11 and everyone used it in 2013 and now it has already uh, beyond the human uh, humans uh, perception level and got about 97 percent accuracy uh, uh, and nowadays for every machine learning task there is a high chance that the best results was given by deep, deep neural networks uh, as we will be talking about security so here is a catch the catch is that neural networks are very easily uh, to be fooled and uh, so basically, you give me an input image or an input uh, example, and, and uh, a adversarial goal. For example, you wanted to misclassify a cat as a dog, or in this example, you want me to hide this black car from the object detection. Uh, I can find an image x prime that's just slightly different from the original input x, uh, with only small perturbations that may be invisible to human, and can achieve the adversarial goal. And this vulnerability has uh, well known to the research society, and especially when assuming attacker has full knowledge about the model. Uh, however, the security implication of real world uh, deep learning deployment has not well understood yet. And uh, attack, uh, since uh, in real world, attackers uh, usually have very restricted threat models, as we will see later. And today we will be uh, uh, focusing on the adversarial threats against the real world uh, deep learning systems, which will be looking to how the adversarial example can affect deep learning uh, deployment 
uh, with only black box access, for example, and uh, or even under many physical constraints. So here goes the outline of the talk. I will present how the virtual example can be created in physical world to fool the object detection models, uh, which is at the center of the perception of self-driving cars. And next, I will uh, reveal the adversal threats against uh, um, AI models residing in the cloud, uh, which is in the uh, trending machine learning as a service setting. And finally, we will introduce our initial effort towards measurable uh, robustness of deep neural networks. Uh, so the first part, uh, we call it perception deception, a physical adversarial attack against the DNN object detector. So for some uh, disclaimer, so we are not targeting any commercial autonomous driving system or vendors, and we don't provide any comments to the vulnerability. Um, so first, uh, the self-driving cars are powered by a large set of expensive sensors like LiDAR, camera, or radar, and it can easily give a safe science, uh, give us a sense of safety, uh, as all these uh, perception uh, systems cannot make mistakes at uh, the same time. However, we are still seeing accidents happening quite often, and we will start from this example, which is a, 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 an accident happened last summer on US 101, uh, with a Tesla car believed to be in the autopilot mode and hit uh, the road barrier and it causes uh, deaths. And we will look into the challenge to the perception of a autonomous vehicle. If you look at the scene of the accident uh, from the Google Street View, you can see that uh, when approaching the fog, uh, the road bar becomes as wide as a lane line. And it actually uh, fools the uh, lane detections uh, to sync it as a normal traffic line and keep the vehicle in the line until it hits an uh, obstacle, and it's resulting in a crash. So however, if we uh, think twice, so this accident should, not have, been, uh, should have been avoided if, uh, this, uh, if the object detector, uh, which uses a camera, can detect such uh, obstacles. And uh, so this part of the talk, we will be focusing on object detectors, and we will show how these detectors can be easily fooled in physical settings. So here is some background on the object detector. So it deals with uh, detecting instances of semantic objects. And the output will be the bounding boxes. Uh, as shown here, you can see there are, they can detect small and large objects, uh, as well as their classes and confidence score. So we will be targeting on a model called YOLO V3. Uh, it's short for you only look once, and it is a state-of-the-art object detector. Uh, from this uh, graph, you can see uh, it's fast and accurate. And it's especially popular among self-driving companies uh, because many due to its fast uh, inference time. And you can achieve over 20 frames per second without losing accuracy. So uh, actually our Badu's Apollo open source uh, self-driving platform's uh, perception module is a customized version of YOLO. And use it to detect vehicles and pedestrians. So to uh, give a brief introduction of how YOLO works, uh, this input image will be uh, split into 13 by 13 uh, grid, and every uh, set grid will uh, go through the DNN, and the output will be a uh, long vector, uh, including the first four as the coordinates of the bounding box, and the fifth uh, element is the probability of this cell or this grid being an object of interest. And uh, then, the class probability of each of the 18 classes in the training data set. And the final probability of a bounding box is given by multiplying the objectiveness and the most confidence class. And finally, the prediction of different cells will be uh, associated to give the final result. So the uh, adversarial example uh, against object detector uh, can be easily generated by obtaining the gradient information of the model. Uh, for example, we define a loss function as a probability of cars in the output of the model. And then we will uh, iteratively uh, modify the input to minimize this loss, like let this loss goes down, and find an uh, epsilon that mi minimizes loss, and the epsilon is a uh, perturbation. So uh, eventually we can find a noise, like a perturbation, and if applied to the image, we can make it misclassified. So the, the, the right hand side, you can see the cars were detected as chairs, uh, etc. And 
uh, uh, clearly this uh, perturbation cannot be applied in physical settings since you cannot add those salt and pepper noise to the sky or to the road. And uh, the question is, is uh, such attack feasible in a physical world? Uh, what are the uh, realistic attack in the physical world? So we define a restricted spread model in physical settings by only allowing patches to be applied on objects. So because we can see stickers being put on uh, stop signs and some flags or even screens mounted on cars, this can be all uh, can all be potential uh, objectives for attackers since you put something uh, carefully crafted there and it may not raise uh, alarms uh, from human observers. And uh, here gives an example of how to apply such patch. For example, we want to fabricate an object that can pop up from nowhere in the uh, perception of self-driving cars. We can uh, have a start from our original patch and uh, do some perspective transformation to put it on the ground and then applying perturbations. Uh, so yeah, so it's a perturbed uh, flag. And then it can uh, uh, fool the detector to think this patch as a car. And it may cause a, a sudden uh, emergency stop or something. And we also can do other uh, evil things like hiding something from the object detector. So in this example, we put a, a license plate size patch on the license plate and it can fool the uh, detector of not detecting this car. Uh, but if we want to do that physically, there are many other things we need to consider. For example, the uh, patch should be reliable against uh, different angles or uh, yeah, different uh, building angles or other conditions. So here we put, uh, so this uh, kind of a semi-physical uh, example showing we, we show the patch on the screen and we move our camera to see that it's kind of reliable but still far from the uh, physical attack. So I will, yeah, question. Do these models use like the distance to the object and things like that? Uh, no. Okay. So they will, because the label data doesn't have the, such information. So they will only label data with spawning box of objects and they will learn from that. So yeah. And uh, so the first challenge is uh, the appearance change with distance, uh, different distances and angles and also color distortion of different devices. For example, you generate a digital color or digital perturbation on the screen, and when you print it out, it will be different color. And when it, when it was further perceived by the camera, and it's uh, even more different. And also various uh, lighting conditions, and also how to control the location of the patch. If you generate it digitally, you will want to ensure that it's, it's patched physically at the exactly same location and this usually uh, cannot be that precise in real world. So we will, so I will introduce some key tactics, <coughs> tactics to the challenges. So the first is uh, car management. Basically, we saw the previous loss function is only the probability of the car and we will add extra terms to encourage the perturbation to use uh, printer-friendly colors. So uh, like given uh, uh, a set of printable RGB triples and the non-printability score or NPS of this perturbation is measured by the difference between the uh, color used in the uh, perturbation and the printable color. And we will add that term to the loss. And here is an example. So original patch, uh, if we generate a, a, a perturbation, it looks in the second image, but when it's later printed and captured by iPhone, it will be totally different, and your perturbation may not be effective to fool the model. So we will use this NPS score like as a regularization term to encourage to use to, to do uh, printer-friendly generation like here. And the whole generation process is an iterative optimization. So uh, this one shows how we use a small stop sign patched on the stop sign without uh, hiding those uh, characters. And you can see iteratively we are uh, minimizing the loss and the perturbation become larger and larger but the confidence of this stop sign being detected is uh, becoming smaller. And also we will add uh, like random transformations uh, to 
to uh, to mitigate the problem of the uh, uh, infected uh, patch area, so that it can resist you know, to virus. And also, uh, we will use total variant loss to encourage <coughs> perturbed patch to be smooth. So because the edges of each pixel may be uh, uh, not uh, distinguishable if you capture from camera. So we so put everything together, we can do reliable physical attacks against object detectors. For example, here, this stop sign from certain angles and distance can be, uh, can, can be had from the detector until it's very close. <laughs> and also, we can build more realist, uh, is that playing? Okay, yeah. Like more realist, uh, take a time. So we mount a screen on the car, just like uh, usually sometimes we can see the advertisement being play displayed on the car. And once it shows certain uh, picture, it's uh, carefully crafted, it can be had from object detectors. Kind of reliably. And until we switch to another. Uh, <laughs> So the takeaway for the first part is that with carefully set up, with carefully set up, physical attacks can uh, are feasible against the DNA-based object detectors, and a robust and adversarial example resist resistant model is required in safety critical systems like palm sharing. <coughs> okay, so the second part uh, we call it I know your secret sauce: fingerprinting attack against machine learning as a service. So, uh, backed by the many like giant cloud providers, the machine learning as a service that offers AI tools as part of the cloud computing services is steadily making their way to the enterprise applications. That sometimes requires security and safety considerations. For example, an uh, online forum uses a uh, 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 explicit content detection uh, service provided by maybe Google. Uh, and to, to filter uh, porn images or uh, violent images from the uh, forum. And also, it can use some uh, sentiment analysis to, to detect hate speech and uh, eliminate them from the forum. And there are many use cases. And the question is, are cloud models safe against the adversary? So here we pre present a case study. So this safe search API is provided by Google and I believe it's already used by uh, forums such as Reddit. And it can detect it explicit content such as adult or uh, violent content within an image uh, that's sent in the query. So here is its workflow. So give an image and uh, to call in the API by uh, sending uh, this image, it, the uh, client will get such uh, results back. So we can see that the client knows nothing about the model, and also the results didn't tell uh, much more information. It only provides some discrete uh, probability, like very likely or very unlikely. And uh, so this bar shows the one uh, is from very unlikely to be an adult or inappropriate content, and to five is very likely. So it's kind of a black box threat model for the attack. And the question is, is a black model safe against fraudulent or uh, like cyber criminals? Uh, so with easy uh, demos, we implement adversarial spatial transformations on the image. <coughs> so we can see that these models are extremely robust. And we can see that with some uh, very simple computation techniques of transformations, uh, we can bypass the detection. For example, the original one, uh, the the, the score of adult and already is five and five uh, indicate it's very adult. And so with some uh, just the simple transformations, you can degrade, uh, make the model think it's uh, safe. And for example, our evaluation shows that, uh, yeah, so I think it's all, we cross some point images and found out all the uh, images with some transformations can bypass the uh, detection. Uh, yes, it is some evaluation. So, yeah, so the keynote and the PPT don't agree with the uh, format. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, we analyze the potential cost. So, maybe in, when training the models, there is not enough spatial data augmentations because 
uh, I think without security or robustness consideration, people usually use some uh, simple rotation, maybe 10 degrees for augmenting the data. So it doesn't uh, resist to like perspective transformations. And also, the pre-processing may not cropping out the region of interest. Uh, it results in the problem that if you add a frame to make the region of interest small, and it can also bypass the detection. Uh, but this simple attack, is it uh, also generally applicable to other computation models? And the answer is no. If we look at other models, for example, also the object detection API, it's also provided by Google. And the use case is also uh, like do some censorship or video analysis. The output, as shown before, is bounding boxes and scores and the classes. And there is uh, no more like uh, very small classes. It's actually connect, uh, connect, uh, will classify uh, objects into a Google called a Google Knowledge Graph. It's a huge a hierarchical uh, label data set. And we find that uh, just using simple spatial transformation cannot for the detector. Uh, and, oh, I, so, and I also can point out that the reason is because the training of object, object detectors, it will, use a, it will train a small network called region proposal network. It can uh, automatically find the region of interest in the image. And also because it split the images to small pieces, so it's also resist to many spatial transformations. And we will introduce our attack called fingerprint attack that generates adversarial examples efficiently against uh, color vision models. And yes, here's some challenges for, set, for attacking the machine learning as a service setting. So adversarial should require white box access to the model. Like uh, the previous part, we use uh, gradient information to generate the sample. And the attacker knowledge can include like the prediction results, or internal logics, or model parameters, or even model uh, architectures. And usually train data, we don't assume uh, attacker to know, but this information already enough to get the gradient. But within the cloud EM models, so the, the attacker can only have access to the last year prediction results. Uh, but our finding is that uh, black box provides a felt sense of uh, security. So uh, yeah, the main idea of the uh, attack is that if you don't have the access, but uh, how about we steal the secret uh, of the cloud models, leveraging transfer learning. So transfer learning uh, is, I think, uh, uh, I think one of the most successful, successfully applied uh, machine learning techniques that can um, transfer the knowledge you learn from one data set. This data set may be big, and uh, you need a lot of resource to train. Like only big companies can train that network, but other people can leverage the learned information uh, because if your tasks share, uh, share some similarity with them. Uh, for example, the ImageNet context winning models can be used into the medical image processing and diagnosis because it can, uh, it, it extracts the same low level features from either uh, image net images and also medical images. And this, here is another example of how uh, transfer learning are applied. So usually uh, there are uh, different layer, maybe uh, around 100 layer of the model, and you can fix uh, the last few layers and only use, uh, 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 sorry, you can fix the uh, previous, maybe most of the layers and only customize the later uh, feature uh, later like fully connected layer because the the uh, uh, first few layers are in charge of lower level feature extraction and it shares uh, much similar uh, uh, properties across tasks and usually you will customize the last few layers to adapt to your classification uh, data set and also you can do some fine tune there is uh, some fine tune techniques you can fix the previous layers weights and only use your data set to train the last few fully connected layer. And also use uh, Yolo V3 as an example. So here is its architecture. And we can see that uh, we will usually call the previous layer, like showing the box, uh, called feature extractors. They are actually uh, uh, derived from the winning models of image classification tasks. And so the object detection will first do a feature extraction and use this feature to detect bounding boxes. 
Um, and our insight is that the adversarial samples at first layer k, which is a, a specific internal layer, can also fool some model. It's because since each layer can only observe what is passed on from the previous layer, so if our adversarial example's internal representation at layer k succeed, it must be misclassified into the same label as a target image, regardless of the width of any layer that uh, follows k. So we will target internal layers. And our attack uh, works in three steps. First, we will identify the feature extractor that the target model, you know, which is residing in the cloud, uh, is pre-trained on with a few queries, and we call them Oracle inputs. And then, with this information, we can generate adversarial examples on white box uh, locally uh, on the known feature extractor. And then, we can attack the black box model using the sample. So, our target on the internal layer is to um, so yeah how to say so we uh, so this is uh, tells about how to generate the oracle input so uh, we define a target called dispersion of logics at layer k so it's an internal layer and there are many dispersion measures such as Gini coefficient of almost the uh, commonly the standard deviation and the intuition behind that is that recognizable images will have uh, high dispersion. So uh, shown here, if it's a benign cat image, if you monitor the internal logics uh, of layer K, you can find that uh, uh, it has high dispersion, like standard deviation is high, and it's because each uh, output represents some feature. So if you are a recognizable image, you will, you will be feature rich. And if you generate an adversarial image, and you can that minimizes the feature. It will finally, like, uh, doesn't look anything to the model. Uh, and our fingerprint uh, target is so for each uh, popular feature extractor, we generate one adversarial example that minimizes the dispersion of each of the last few layers, because we assume that. The cloud model will use will fix the first few layers and uh, cu customize the last few layers for their detection task. So we collect all these feature popular feature extractors, generate Oracle images for each of the model, and fit into the cloud model and uh, monitor the final output of the model. And then we can see that in this graph, it, this is uh, shows the for example we all use a cat image, and this shows the cat score of different. Uh, open source feature extractors, Oracle, uh, fit into the cloud model. We can see that uh, there are some uh, Oracle images successfully make the cat disappear. And we uh, highly suspect that the cloud models will use this feature extractor like uh, F6 and F13 uh, uh, as their feature extractor, or at least uh, use uh, similar uh, architectures. And then we can apply the previously mentioned gradient-based uh, adversarial generation techniques to generate such adversarial examples on the op uh, open source the feature extractor uh, to attack the model. And for the generation, uh, there are, uh, is also a different attack uh, techniques to choose. So for example, you can still keep the same way by uh, minimizing the dispersion of feature extractor and it has high success rate but may require larger perturbation or if you have a target uh, of you want to misclassify a cat as a specific species of dog you can use some logic pairing to make the internal logics look like a dog's internal logics and then generate the sample and fit into the black box model so our re results shows that uh, by fingerprinting the the cloud AI models and find the, the feature extractor they use, we can achieve a high success rate. So even with only two queries, because those uh, queries uh, are not free, so only use two queries, we can get like a decent uh, success rate. And with maybe 100 queries, we have very high confidence for uh, successfully for the object detector, even as in the cloud. So conclusion is that so the black box only provides a fair sense of security, and fooling uh, prediction results by targeting internal layer is generally applicable to DNS. And we also uh, kind of are testing other 
uh, secure critical, security critical, uh, like AI models that uh, cause something called the optical character recognition to recognize the eye. Uh, like, uh, it's you, all, all we do is to detect promotional contents in the images uh, by analyzing the text and also <laughs> face recognitions. Uh, this attack should always apply. And the potential solution is to harden the model with adversal uh, training. Uh, yeah, so here it's uh, maybe the first adversal example against human vision, so it's uh, black, uh, black hearts and uh, red spades. Mm. So, uh, so we will introduce our initial efforts in how to mitigate such problems. So the part three, uh, I will call it perceptual, so it's a uh, uh, tool that we, will, we are going to release very soon towards benchmarking robustness of deep neural networks. So existing uh, metrics for like uh, evaluating how robust is a model against adversarial usually use uh, LP norm based uh, metrics. So for example, the L2 norm indicates the uh, Euclidean distance between original and adversarial images. And it measures how hard an adversarial or, 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 how much, or how large the perturbation adversarial needs to use to put the model. And or maybe L infinity norm measures the maximum delta added on every pixel of original image. So there are some uh, actually pixel wise metrics uh, they are commonly used in the research community. However, is that enough? So, as we said, uh, attacker can use different. Uh, so attacks uh, capability are not limited to spatial transformation, uh, not limited to pixel-wise perturbation. They can use like, spatial transformations, ensemble, or common corruptions. So these are some real-world promotional porn images that we acquired online that evade detection and appeared in the forum. So we can see the several criminals are use adversarial techniques like rotations, or ensemble different small images, or use some common corruptions. So, uh, yeah, it calls for a maybe standardized benchmark to measure the robustness against adversary. And there are some popular uh, or existing adversarial toolboxes like Google's Clever Hands and this Face Labs uh, Foolbox. And IBM also have its uh, called Adversarial Robustness Toolkit or something, ART. And we do some, uh, because we, uh, yeah, we use it and get some sense of. Uh, them and do a compar com comparison. So all these uh, three tools has much platform support, like it support both uh, like TensorFlow or PyTorch, and uh, only some of them provide standard metrics, which is beyond um, the simple purpose of just generate an adversarial example and give that to you. So they can help measure how hard it is to generate the. <laughs> adversarial example against model and it can be used as a metric to evaluate your, to describe your uh, robustness. And another uh, like principle we compare it as a com consistent API design is more from engineering perspective, how people can use it. Uh, so a toolkit with consistent API design uh, is that you can use one piece of code to attack different models, like one piece of attack gen uh, adversarial generation techniques to uh, attack different models. And we will uh, introduce later our open source uh, toolkit called Perceptron Benchmark. So, so the previous three only focus on image classification tasks. And as we already introduced before, there are tons of different computation tasks. And we will include them in our Perceptron Benchmark. And also, another uh, good point is that we will provide verifiable robustness. And I will introduce later. So here is uh, yeah, a example of how is showing that how easy our benchmark can be used. So if you want to benchmark a target model, see uh, the Resident 15 against uh, a adversarial attack. So this one called the Carlini and Wagner uh, attack is believed to be the most uh, effective uh, pixel-wise perturbations to the deep learning models. And you can just put some uh, command line uh, command here, and this is the perceptron's command, command line interface. And the output will be first the adversarial image that can attack it, and also the uh, 
like the mean L2 dif uh, uh, distances required to generate the uh, adverse image. And this one will quantify the minimum perturbation required to fool the model. And it's actually an upper bound for robustness against pixel-wise perturbations. And we are integrating uh, many uh, security metrics beyond like pixel-wise ones. So for, uh, for example, uh, this one shows how we uh, yeah, get some insights using our benchmark. So we want to robust uh, to, to benchmark the robustness, robustness against, for example, a perturbation called blended noise, and then we compare two models. We can see that uh, the model nest, uh, net large is more robust because it requires uh, larger perturbations to for also to succeed. And it can provide insights like <coughs> Sorry, uh, large model is not necessarily more robust because the net, uh, net large is only uh, 93 million parameters while VGG has over 100 million parameters. And also the net, net large actually is Google uh, built, uh, Google's, uh, it, it is built by AI. It's um, in 2018 and I think the network architectures were found by a auto ML model. So maybe we can see from here, the AI builds better DNN than human built, which is uh, the BGG model. And uh, another example shows that uh, if we uh, measure the robustness against another metric called the motion blur, so it can happen in, uh, in like self-driving scenarios. And we can, if we benchmark two models, we can see that the object detection model is much more robust than uh, the image classification model, which is uh, REST 915. And uh, this time we are not using the, the pixel-wise LP norm metric, we use the kernel size of the, the motion blur. And uh, we can see object detector is more robust than classifier, maybe due to the region proposal network. And uh, I would introduce our uh, verification <coughs> techniques for the DNN, for certain properties of the DNN. So verification, uh, I, uh, of DNN have some, uh, or the research community has also already some published uh, attempts, and then they, their approach are usually based on symbolic methods, uh, like the most popular one, or most famous one called Red Flex, so first walk, and they are usually prohibitively slow. And so the, in their evaluation, they can only verify like three layers of network networks, while the currently most um, networks are over 100 layers. Because it's the, the speed will scale uh, with input, both input size and the network size. Uh, uh, think about you will maintain a symbolic interval uh, of the every like millions of neurons in the network. So it's very uh, slow. So an alternative approach is to verify a property by uh, applying it on all possible inputs. So it looks like a brutal force approach, but we found that in the uh, using some computer vision techniques, many sec uh, security properties can be enumerated within reasonable time. For example, if we want to verify the robustness of a model against the rotation, so we find that given an image, the number of possible images uh, produced by rotations within a certain degree, uh, like range, is innumerable. Uh, uh, for example, just uh, from uh, minus two degree to two degree, you can think of it as uh, there is infinity, infinite uh, uh, floating point, but because the input range of every pixel is zero to 255 uh, integers, and output is also in the range of zero to 255, actually the angles, or we call critical angles, that result in new, matrix, uh, new matrices in the rotation are innumerable. And uh, we have a way to calculate critical angles. So uh, this shows an example of when we run the perception benchmark on a model to verify its uh, robustness against the rotation. So the verification will only scale with the input size, since we don't need to worry how many parameters uh, in the model. So because it's, we only use uh, conservation techniques. So the first step is can calculate all the critical angles yeah, that result in possible uh, new matrices. And then, for example, this is 
kind of a quite a large image already. It's a four one six, um, multiple four one six uh, pixels. So I've, uh, so give a sense um, about the image size is that every image net image is only like two twenty four pixel, uh, multiple two twenty four pixel. So for this size of image, it can give four million different uh, uh, new matrices that result from uh, rotation and. Uh, Within one single GPU, we can verify that in six <coughs> hours. And it can easily give a verifiable bound and also counter examples. So uh, here are some highlights of our uh, benchmark. So we have built in <coughs> model support for first of classification models in PyTorch, TensorFlow, and Keras, and also major object detectors. And also we already have built in support for uh, many popular machine learning as a service APIs, uh, like Google Cloud Vision, Baidu's AI, AI platform, and Azure's uh, recognition toolkit. So it's I think it's the uh, first time to allow all these models, uh, like open source models and commercial models, and across different computer vision tasks, to be compared together in the same chart. And we also support uh, currently 15 uh, robustness metrics, and uh, five of them are verifiable. Uh, so and yeah, so we will also provide APIs, API interface that are uh, welcome contributions. Uh, and you can maybe yeah, the format has some issue, but uh, the takeaway here is that is the API design is consistent. If you want to switch from PyTorch to Keras, you only we have wrappers for all of the models APIs, and you can easily uh, adapt it by only maybe changing one or two lines. And so we will conclude uh, that we believe robustness to be a metric as important as accuracy when evaluating a DNS performance. So maybe uh, we are calling for the change in the evaluation of the, like, the machine learning communities to give robustness more credit when evaluating models. And also the perception as a benchmark to evaluate the future efforts in hardening DNN models and defense against adverse examples. And it will be released on the GitHub of Baidu. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. And uh, uh, thank you. And uh, you're welcome to follow us on our updates on media.